Welcome to my channel. I am so grateful to have you here watching my videos. I'm very thankful for every person that comes. So thank you very much. This is today's daily news clips. For my first item, I have one titled, Political Earthquakes Are Coming to the U.S. and Europe. I try to stay away from politics, but I found this article very interesting, so I thought I would read it to you, a little bit of it. Last April, a squad of armed police officers in Brussels, Belgium, marched into a national conservative conference with the intent of shutting it down. The alleged crime? Hate speech. When the police saw the TV cameras, they turned tail, exiting the building, and blocked people from entering. The next day, a judge ruled that the conference could go forward. But the damage was done. The local political authorities had branded national conservatives a menace to public order. It would soon become clear that the police action was just one of a series of dirty tricks by European leaders to demonize their opponents as far-right fascists and Putin sympathizers. And reading towards the end of the article, the biggest winning issue for national conservatives is migration, which has surged in recent years, just as it has in the U.S. The situation is even more acute in Europe than in the U.S., given the con continent's smaller size and its greater difficulty in assimilating Muslim migrants from the Middle East and Africa. But the salience of unchecked migration is a striking commonality between the success of national conservatism in the U.S. and Europe. Another issue is the cost of living in terms of energy and housing. Here, conservatives have focused more on energy than housing, perhaps because they have fewer answers for the latter than the former. Energy can quickly become more abundant and cheaper with lifting restrictions on oil and gas production. The strongest opposition is from the 10% 10, 10, 10 to 30% of the voting public most alarmed by climate change. Housing, by contrast, requires large segments of the population to agree to, to more buildings in their neighborhood. I just thought this was interesting because if you're, if you're watching the trends worldwide, it, it does seem like there is a confluence of issues across the planet that are driving people towards the conservative side of politics. And what's interesting to me is that those issues are all being pushed by the elites. So it seems to me that the bigger issue that is not being discussed in this article is that it's opposition to the elites that's a driving a lot of this. People are sick and tired of having politicians tell them how to live their lives. This is another article regarding climate change or bringing up climate change. It says the climate change movement goes to court while judges ban fossil fuels. Now that's an interesting question. What none of these judges or litigators take into account is the catastrophic economic effects of not using fossil fuels. As an example, the left wants to abolish air conditioning, which requires electricity, which mostly comes from fossil fuels. But air conditioning saves tens of thousands of lives a year. What about the millions of jobs that would be wiped out with no fossil fuels? How many thousands of Americans would die in hospitals or assisted living centers or daycare centers or schools if the lights go out with no fossil fuel power plants. This is the thing that, that strikes me about these, what they call green movements, is that they seem to not, they seem to not really think through the consequences of what they're demanding. We're not at a point in, in the world where you can get enough energy from what they call renewable sources like solar and uh, steam-powered 
you know, heat from the from the earth, um, air, turbines, that kind of thing, to replace the energy that's being generated by fossil fuels. We're just not there yet. We might get there someday. I mean, it's, I think it's a strong possibility that we will. But until we do, just putting an end to fossil fuels entirely would be, well, I guess dramatic is probably not a good enough description. It would be catastrophic. Uh, <laughs> think, Just think in terms of daily life. You get up in the morning, the air conditioning is running, the water works, you turn on the lights so you can see what you're doing, and maybe you fix something real quick in the microwave for breakfast. Well, you couldn't do any of that without electricity. So, what are you going to do when the electricity's turned off? <laughs> I, I don't think they've thought about that. They really haven't. Fossil fuels have saved millions more lives over the last century than they, than they take. They make Americans much richer and safer and happier and healthier and more mobile. Meanwhile, there is no evidence backing up the absurd claim by teenagers that if Hawaii stopped using fossil fuels, the state's weather conditions would improve. That's in reference to the beginning of the article, which you can read yourself. There were some teenagers in Hawaii that took the state to court and said that fossil fuels had to be eliminated entirely in the state of Hawaii. And I'm thinking, so no airplane flights to Hawaii and no cruises to Hawaii? Uh, isn't that going to destroy the Hawaiian tourist industry? Seems to me it would. I don't see how they, you know, it's like they just haven't, they really haven't thought it through, basically. I, I have nothing wrong with demanding that we move towards renewable energy and that we do everything in our power to increase the amount of renewable energy that we have. But we have to do it sensibly. We can't just cut off fossil fuels entirely. Here's another article along the same lines of what I read in that first article. Ireland erupts over mass migration. I haven't highlighted anything here. It's, it's basically a series of bullet points. But I'll put the link in the description and you can read it. Um, this is just a small sample of what's going on all over the world. Um, there's a lot of migration going on right now. I don't know why. Uh, I don't know what's driving it. But uh, it, it's got people upset because resources are being consumed by these migrants. And so there's less resources for the people that live there to begin with. And they're not happy about that. And understandably so. And then finally I have a uh, it's a completely unrelated topic. Let me Middle or high turn this school off, girl. off. Thank you. Uh, this is a Prager University video. Uh, why girls become boys. Uh, I'm not going to play it for you, but I'll put the link in the description. Uh, it's a, something that you should think about. She brings up a point in here that uh, about 10 or 15 years ago, uh, the only people that wanted to transition their sex were boys. Girls were not doing that. Now, all of a sudden, there's all kinds of girls doing it. And you have to ask yourself, why? What's driving this? So anyway, that's what's going on in the news. Those are the things I pick. I try to pick things that I think you might not be aware of or you might not have even heard of that will help broaden your horizons when it comes to the news. I pray for you that God will bless you and strengthen you and give you health and bless your life and that he will do the same for every person that you love. This is the Vietnam Mirror Vet out.